from the time I finished my, my treatment in 2021 and I started ministry, and my, my ministry is philanthropy. I would call philanthropy is my ministry because I feed poor cancer patients who are going through chemotherapy. So that's what I do. Um, that's what I do on the side, but I, I, I work within higher education. And I have seen quite a lot. I've seen a lot. The pictures that people send me, sometimes I wake up and I want to cry. I wake up and I want to cry. There's a time I woke up to a picture and I even came here and I said, please guys, don't send me pictures. Don't send me pictures. Because I woke up to a picture of a breast that, that had wounds. That the wounds were just doing this. And that picture was sent to me. Yes, the glorious generation. Yes, glorious generation. I speak from experience. Because I know the pain of chemo getting in. Because I have the chemo pot. I know the pain of my nails turning black. I know the pain of my hair falling off until the texture of my hair has never come back to normal. I know the pain of losing my complexion. I know all that. And I would not want, I would not want other people to go. Do you know what, what I wish and I pray? I'm like, God, if I told somebody to get this, let them get them at stage zero. If I told anyone is to get this, let them get them at stage zero. Because at stage zero, many times, you don't even need chemotherapy. You don't need radiation. You just go there and they slice it off and you go walking away. And you go walking away. We don't want you to go through this. That is why I encourage mammograms, frequent checks, go get checked. If, if, if you feel a lump in your breast, if you feel anything foreign in your breast, because women, you're the one who showers. When you shower, you scratch yourself, you touch your breast. Be somebody who touches themselves. Touch yourself. Eh? Touch. Touch. Feel. Check yourself. When you're used to doing that, you will realize when something is abnormal. You will realize when something is abnormal. And even some people, you thank God for your spouses. There are some people, some women, who did not discover a breast cancer. Their husbands discovered. You, you know those husbands? I saw a video of a, a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees are humans, are, and humans are just the same. A male chimpanzee and a female chimpanzee. Did you see that? The, the male chimpanzee all the time going and and pushing the breast of female chip. I was laughing. I was like, oh man, a chip can do that. <laughs> Thanks, Sheila. Thank you. I appreciate you. You know, so be, be on the checking. And if you find it, I've had people tell me, I feel something, but I'm scared. I'm scared of going to the to hostel. When someone told me that, I told them this. I told them, guess what? When you are scared of finding out something that scares you, can you imagine the time you waste and if it was something bad and you waste the time, the time you found it, you could go in and it could be a stage zero or one. But when you go late because now you've started feeling pain, you've started feeling pain, then you go late. Then you find it at a late stage. These two have different prognosis. And prognosis the measure with five years. This one may be told you have 99% or 100% chance to living to five years. But this one may be told you have a prognosis of 20% to 15% to 5%. Do you want this prognosis or do you want this prognosis? When you feel something strange in your breast or in any part of your body, go in and get checked. Get checked. Get checked. 
get checked. Please. Now, there is a friend of mine. She's in Houston, Texas. This lady was just watching TV. She was lying down on the carpet. The way you can lie down on the carpet like this and you're watching TV there. Then she put her arm, she put her arm on herself like this. And when she put her arm, she felt something. She, she felt something hard. And her sister is a pharmacist. When she felt something hard, she said, ah, what's this? She did not waste time. She went in for checkup immediately. Guess what? Early stage kidney cancer. They only went, carried out, no chemo, no radiation, nothing. It was done. That is the benefit and the advantage of early diagnosis. So let us strive. Thanks, Shalene. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thanks, Samuel. I appreciate you guys. That is why I will always sit here the way I am and I will continue to educate till the day that I die. Yes, you will see me here like this till the day that God calls me home when I'm very old. Because I will not let somebody suffer, yet I have no leg that I'm keeping. See, my mom had cancer next to her lung wall. She had been in the hospital for her lungs when they found it. See now? It's the, 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 the stigma around cancer that makes you uncomfortable. And I do this all the time for people who are uncomfortable to cross the bridge and get comfortable. Because when you cross that bridge and get comfortable, then you will be able to be there for people going through cancer. The reason why so many cancer patients are deserted and left by their friends is because of the comfort. Because of seeing cancer patients or survivors or thrivers are burdens, people who are dying, this is too much. Uh oh, let me make my way, leave them alone. No. That's not how life should be. That's not how life should be. It's like telling someone who doesn't, whose legs have been amputated, that you are uncomfortable. Because why should we lie? You are uncomfortable because you feel that, mm -mm. Mm -mm. that's it. So guys, we have a beautiful song that we are going to listen to. A question that has come and that question is going to help me finish at a high note just asking again what makes you so happy people have always asked me what makes me so happy i think that's that's a very very important question let me tell you something when i was diagnosed i was suicidal i wanted to die because i had little kids and i did not see the reason to go through I, I was giving up because I was annoyed at God. I am a believer. I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. And I felt betrayed. I felt, God, why did you have to do that? Why did you have to let it happen? I've served you. I'm a pastor's daughter. I've served you in Sunday school. I've taught. I've served worship. I was a leader of worship. God, I've always given to people who don't have. I've always given my all. And I've loved genuinely to the point that I feel hurt. But you let cancer visit me. So I lost my happiness. I lost my joy. I am, I was, I was that person who, who was the life at a party. If people are there, they're like, hey, wait, where's Diana? Where's, call Diana, man. Diana has to be here. Then I changed. And the people who stayed around me noticed the change. But many people left me. And the many who left me nowadays, I see some of them checking my LinkedIn profile. And whenever I see them checking, I just, I smile a painful smile. Because when I smile, that smile 
it's a smile of oh they're checking if i have made any new update is she making new updates or we will find that the last update she made was one year so meaning she's been dead one year but anyway in the course of my treatment and up to now we had a prayer group and i had pace setters i call them my pace setters because when my pace setters let me tell you birds that flock together who are your friends? Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. So my friends are prayerful people. Okay? So they put me in prayer. They put me in prayer. There is no family curse that I, I broke. You are the people that make people who have had cancer or are sick with some illness... You make them think that there is some cash that they had. There is a sin that they did. There is... Ah, you guys. Cancer is malaise like with a disease. Like you can have malaria. Does someone have malaria because it is a curse? Does someone have typhoid or COVID because they are cursed? Please, guys. Detach from these narratives. Detached from those narratives. There's no generation curse that I, uh, I broke. I just had cancer. Simple. I used to eat a lot of junk. And I had uh, hormone treatment. Hormonal treatment for estrogen. I did everything that could contribute to breast cancer. Yeah. I had endometriosis. And my I was treated with hormonal treatment. If you're taking family planning that is a lot of hormones. Think. Ask yourself, go tell your doctor to substitute, to give you something that's not hormonal treatment. Those are things that can cause breast cancer. So I divert because of that comment. But one time, I felt like my soul was sad. I had already gone for, for counseling, for therapy, and I felt sadness in my soul. And I asked God one thing, and I said, God, please show me a sign. Give me three signs that you're here with me. I just want to be sure that you're here. And this is a testimony. This is something that I will always repeat when someone asks me why I'm so happy. And then it did not delay. I asked for that prayer. And then the Lord gave me those signs. Pa, 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 pa. He did not delay. The evening of that day, I woke up and then in the evening, we had prayer. And at the prayer, one of my brothers in Christ, his name is Daniel. So I could go in and they ask me, what has the doctor said? What is new in your treatment? So that they pick items to pray about. So Daniel picked to pray about, I don't know what he was praying about. He was praying about the, the change of medicine because they were changing from Taxol and they're moving to carboplatin. So he was, he was praying so that the carboplatin may not be so harsh on my body. Okay, so he was praying for the new treatment for my body to accept it and, and you know. And when he prayed and he finished praying, listen to this first sign. I asked God to give me three signs. I walk in and in my heart, when I'm giving them prayer items, I'm like, I should tell them to pray for my joy because I, I lack my joy. I miss the joyous me. It is all gone. And I wanted them to pray for my joy to come back. But guess what? Do you know the way the devil makes you think that your prayer is petty? My thought was, ah, that's a very petty prayer. How can I ask people to pray for my joy? So I did not ask them to pray for that. Actually, I was going to tell you, please, right now, I'm not going to answer any other question, but I read what you're saying. And my sister, I was asking my sister, why me? Why me? And my sister said, my sister said, why not you? I was like, why me? Why, why, why me? And my sister told me, why not you? And I looked at her and she said, Diana, you are the toughest in our family. You are the one who, who faces people and you are the one who is not scared. So, so did you want one of us to get cancer? Did you want one of us? It should be you. Can you imagine my sister told me that? And when she told me that, I went and I sat down and I started thinking, my sister, my two sisters, I love them so much, I would not want them to get past her. 
My two brothers, oh my gosh, I love them. My mom, oh no, 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 no. Then I said, yes, it had to be me. It had to be me. And then I am the only one in the family who will mingle with any kind of person. Anybody. If you find me in Kenya, you will find me with the, with, with the motorbike drivers. You know, the cyclists who many people would want to despise. You will find me there chatting and eating some corn with them. That is me. And then the following day, you will find me meeting some corporates looking so different. That is me. I fit in all kinds of populations. And then, me again, I love talking. I am those people that when you are late for a meeting, please, when you see me, run away. Because when you meet me, you will be late. So that is me. I love talking. And then, look at how God crowned it all. I am a trained teacher. I love teaching. And look at it. I had to teach from experience. Now, did I know that this was going to be my mission and my ministry when I was refusing and telling them, take out my breast and don't replace? Did I know? I did not know. Did I know that one day I will be seated in front of my camera using this to inform people to go for their checkup, to teach people? Did I know? I did not know. And there is where you go back to scripture. Everything works well for the good of those that believe. So when I refused to add the prayer for my joy, my brother Daniel finished praying and out of the blues and out of nowhere, Daniel started saying, and God, God, please, I ask you, please give my sister her joy back. Give Diana her joy back. And I was sitting next to my mom. We were on Zoom and I opened my eyes. And I was scared. My heart started beating. My heart started beating. I was like, how did he know? How did he know that joy was a prayer item? I did not tell them. I refused to tell them. That is the moment that I knew that God had just dropped me. Sign number one. And then there was sign number two and sign number three. I will talk about those another time because they are long. But what I wanted to answer the person is say, why are you so happy? It is because God brought back my joy. And guess what? Before cancer, I was full of happiness. But after cancer, the happiness was replaced by joy. Do you know the difference? Happiness is a thermometer. But joy is a thermostat. Thermometer depends on a temperature for it to check. But joy, it causes that temperature to happen. So, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So that is where my joy comes from, Hebron. No, you have to understand why things happen. If you want to stay in the dark, you stay in the dark. But when you are in a kind of a relationship with God that I am in, I always want to understand. And when you understand, then you get to know what you're supposed to do. When you understand. When he says everything happens for the good of those that believe, then there should be understanding. Without understanding, you will not understand and you will not comprehend why something that you as a human think is bad is actually for the good. If you don't understand, you will continue blaming God. There are people who've blamed God. So you need inner understanding. You need your inner and spiritual eyes to understand why everything happens for the good. So for me, I really needed to understand. And when I understood, the train had left the station. I was no longer going to joke. Look at that. Leading luminary. Woo! That's, oh, I love it. I love it when I see people who've walked this journey. So nice to meet you, Leading. So nice to meet you. Lynn, that is the prayer. That is the prayer. Lynn, that is the prayer. Please, God. Please, God, give me understanding. Please, God, give me understanding. Give me understanding. 
give me understanding. It is strange when I tell people before cancer, I wasn't a happy, I, I wasn't, I was happy, but my things weren't going the way I would want them to go because I was doing everything everywhere. I felt like I could be everything. I was like a headless chicken. You are everywhere all the time. You have no order. You're not orderly. But after, and many will tell you after, I am very orderly. I know where I'm going. I know the direction. I know what my goal is. I know what I need to do. <coughs> and I don't waste time in failure. I try when it fails a pick up. I try another thing. You have to know that failure is to everybody. You can't succeed without failing. So that's how my life has changed. So guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having this fellowship time with me. Father, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for, um, you know, helping us to meet each other and to, um, to give ourselves a chance to learn about our body, uh, which God you created in your own image. Jehovah God, in this fellowship, there are people who are in pain. There are people who are suffering due to different reasons that, of course, I don't know. But Jehovah, you as an omnipresent God, you as Emmanuel, knows what each and every one of us is going through. Father, I pray that God, you may meet each one of us at the point of our needs. Above all, Jehovah, give us understanding. Give us understanding and help us to identify what your will in our lives are. Because the moment we know what your will is, the moment we know what your will is in our lives, then we will move in a way that no human can understand. We love you and worship you tonight. Cover us as we sleep. Those that are in regions that have woken up, I pray for safety. I pray for safety in their vehicles. I pray for safety wherever they are going to, that you cover and protect them. Heal bodies that are sick. Touch them, Jehovah. Cleanse them, my King. Above all, those that don't know you, those that reject you, Father, I pray that you may soften their hearts. That they may know the joy of knowing you. We love you and we worship you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.